What is up, y'all? Welcome back to another video. Today we are talking about my build. Um, now, this is my personal build that I use. Now, this is not my war build. I do vary my secondary weapon when it comes to war because I'm more focused on supporting my actual team than I am being up in it, mixing it up, and trying to help in that that realm. So there will be a new video coming soon for that, which is my Life Staff Void Gauntlet build. Um, I'm still working out some tweaks on that and trying to get some gear to kind of complement the Void uh, Gauntlet. All right, now my gear that I have right now for this build is not perfect by any means, but it'll hit the bullet points to help you get it. Um, my last war, I was at 1.4 million healing and 19 kills. Okay, zero deaths. So this build works <coughs> for the war when it comes to that Void Gauntlet and stuff, so keep that in mind. Uh, the one build I'm showing you right now gets me top five on on uh, Outpost Rush every single time, and it'll help a lot as you navigate through a turn -um. Uh, doing those chest runs, helping teams out when you guys run Zergs and stuff. It's a very good build at keeping you alive and keeping everything around you from killing your buddies. Okay? So what we're looking at today is the Life Staff and Hammer build. The War Hammer. Alright. Like I said, none of my gear is maxed out here. I'm still working through some stuff. Um, I'm going to show you guys, don't worry about that bottom left corner, I will show you the attributes that I use as of right now. Now this does not include, I also run most of the time if I can find the mats for it, they've been a little scarce lately. Um, I will run the plus 40 focus food. Okay, so if you guys haven't already, get your cooking up to 200. If you need a video on how to do that quickly and efficiency, efficiently, Go out look at the channel. I've got a 1 to 200 cooking guide along with a 1 to 200 furnishing guide for any of y'all trying to level up your furnishing. Okay? So, what I run for my build right now, this is going to change come me getting my armoring up to 200 because I'm going to be able to roll some better equipment and getting my watermark up. My watermarks are pretty low right now because I've spent a lot of time on my proficiencies. So, right now, I am running the life staff from the faction all right because it's got blessed on it it's very important with this build you need to make sure your life staff has blessed 100 percent. there's two things that i have seen on everybody else's build videos that i have watched and also how i do it myself you want max focus you can get on your life staff you want max blessed you can get on your life staff and you need to have that pristine cut diamond in there okay that pristine cut diamond is going to give you plus 15 percent damage and outgoing healing while at full health right, that's very important you're at full health quite a bit of the time now the caveat there is if you are using your hammer too frequently with this build, you will not be at full health all the time. All right. But if you stand in your heal circle and kind of do what I talk about for the build, I'll give you some, kind of some PvP tips and tricks at the end of the video. Um, you'll be able to stay pretty close to full health the whole time and learn how to maneuver the battlefield just a little bit better. It's all about position awareness and knowing how your team's doing compared to the others. If you start losing a few people, make sure you guys back off. Don't use that hammer other than for CCs and then get right back out. You want to be in that back line if you can after your CCs go out with your hammer. All right. So very, very important to make sure you have blessed the diamond and focus on your item. Now, I have a hammer that I'm not overly fond of. All right. Their hammers have been kind of garbage right now on my server. And I don't have a weaponsmith level 200 yet for me to have him roll the uh, a hammer for me. Uh, we have a guy working on it. He's in like the 160s, I think, right now, trying to get it up so we can start building it out. All right. But for the Warhammer, what you want on it is either Constitution or Focus and or. Um, but you want the most attributes of, as possible from it. Okay. So if I have a hammer, if I have a choice between two hammers and one hammer has 15 Constitution and 15 Focus, but one hammer has 26 Focus, I want the 15... Constitution and the 15 focus because that's 30 points instead of 28. 
Um, you want to make sure you have as many points as possible because you can always respec to make up for the difference. Okay. Um, also, you want to make sure if you have a hammer. I don't know if they have fixed <laughs> the gems yet, but if you have a war hammer equipped for this build, you want to make sure you have an amber gem in it. Uh, it'll do. It gives you 50% of damage is converted to nature and damage scales off base weapon stat or focus, whichever is higher. So that's really going to help, especially if you're not max level, to mitigate that damage and make sure you have as much damage on that hammer as possible because we're not putting anything into strength. We don't want that hammer for damage, but if we can get a little more, it's always a bonus, you know what I mean? Um, so my hammer has extra critical hit damage um, because I will stun people and then go behind them and hit them in the back with the hammer. So you want to make sure that those criticals that you get from the back are very important and there is much damage as humanly possible and then i have siphoning blow which gives which gain 2.5 percent mana per hit um, the cooldown is 25 seconds so anything to get that mana back up especially with the recent uh life staff nerf that had happened i find myself using a lot more mana potions than usual um like I said, if we're in a war situation or if I'm out and about doing high tier areas, I'm going to run with hardy meals in my first slot. Make sure that I'm getting that, that passive healing. Um, if I get in a tight spot, my cooldowns are all gone. I'm able to get some healing out for myself. Um, usually the second slot, I'm going to have that focus food in there or I'll keep it in my inventory and run a second food type here. Um, that's very important that you do so to keep yourself well back in the fight like i said if cooldowns are gone you want to make sure you can still survive uh then i always slot infused mana potions and infused health potions uh, for those really really tight situations where your team gets pushed and you're still alive and you can back out and regroup so then uh for my my armor what i've done is look at perks over anything else all right that's that's kind of what i'm doing right now until i can like I said, get that armoring up and slot stuff. Uh, we want to make sure that we have the max focus we can get and the max and not max constitution. I'll talk about the constitution in a little bit, but you want to get the max focus you can get out of your equipment. So um, I have this rolled for me. It's not a great helmet, but it's got 24 focus on it. The max for armor is 25. So it's for me, that's a good roll i haven't found any other helmets that are 25 focus or 24 focus that have better stats so you want to make sure also that it has that open gem slot for you to be able to put something in there now how i ran this build is a little different than the armor i would run if i was in war or if i was running my void gauntlet in war okay i chose to go with diamonds for all of my gem slots in my armor. Now, the reason I did that, I know a lot of you guys are kind of against that. You like Onyx is better and stuff like that. The reason I did it is because with this build, especially in Outpost Rush, you are going to put yourself in harm's way into your healing circle to use those CCs. So I want to make sure I have as much physical damage absorption as I can have. And this helmet also already had some extra elemental absorption anyway, so I wanted that extra physical too. But I do that because I know that there's probably going to be a great axe user in there. There's probably going to be a hatchet user in there, maybe another hammer person in there. And if I got hit while doing my CCs, I want to make sure that I'm protected as much as possible so I have time to either get the heals and to get the ticks that are going to be in my sacred ground or have time to back out and just not get completely demolished in there, okay? So this helmet is literally, the only thing I like on it is the focus. Um, obviously the harvesting looks good when we're walking around the regular world, but I usually run in my luck set at that point, so it's not a big deal. This is basically just my war helmet for the extra focus. Um, second piece I run for my chest armor, it's, all, it's a heavy chest. I have a heavy chest, heavy helmet. Uh, the heavy chest is going to be the void bent chest plate. Like I said, just because I have not found anything else to put in there. Um, I did the void bent chest because it is heavy armor. So it's got really good armor rating. It's already got the extra elemental. Like I had said, that's why we put the diamonds in there. We want more of that physical absorption. 
Um, it has the critical hits deal 4.8% less damage to you. That's really important, especially for outpost rush, wars, things like that, where you're doing PvP. Um, weakness, disease, exhaust, and rend expire 7.5% faster. Also really great for PvP stuff. And then you have the 2.8% chance of luck. I run this armor literally no matter what I'm doing with this class. Um, it's my luck armor, it's my regular armor, so I love having the luck on there, especially as a furniture person who runs a lot of chest runs. Okay, um, but we want to make sure we had that mass, max attribute in all of our pieces, so 25 constitution is the max attribute. Um, now, the caveat to that, and I'm going to mention this again when we get to our stats. Uh, my stats are not perfect for what I want right now, but the goal with this build is to get as much focus as we can and keep a hundred constitution in okay so for me this was perfectly fine that's 25 of my constitution already accounted for on my on my piece of armor so i can respect that 25 into focus okay uh piece number three we have is going to be this 580 gloves uh it's medium glove it's got 14 focus and nine constitution so 23 total points like I said, not to the max of where we want it to be, but it's 23 points out of the 25, so it's still a good, and they're both put into what we want them to put put into. Okay? Um, I put another pristine cut diamond in there to get that physical damage up. Um, this is a split physical and split elemental uh, piece of armor, so not a big deal, but we're going to get more physical up just to compensate for the other stuff having uh, more elemental absorption um and then this is the very one of the very important ones we have mending protection on this glove which increases healing power by 36 percent for five seconds if aura protection heals an ally with less than 50 percent health um, a lot of this build leans on getting your allies up especially if they have lower than 50 percent health we want to make sure that we're getting out as much damn or as much healing as we can along with those CCs. So we'll get the healing up and they'll take less damage. That's the whole point behind this build. Um, and then we go in for our pants. I have light legs. Now, we are at 21.8 out of the 23 we can have. This is not maxed out, okay? We have two light pieces here. Um, we want one light piece and one medium, but as of right now, this is what I have with the market we have. And the fact that I don't have any crafters. So I'm working on another set. There will be an updated video when I get a actual like best in slot kind of armor and weapons um, after the merges. And I'm able to have more of a market to sift through to figure out all the best pieces. Okay. So we got we have the light pants right here. Um, they're split between elemental and physical. Again, not a big deal. Um, but it has again 23 attribute points those go into constitution So I'm thinking in my head right now that I already have a decent amount of constitution going in So all those points can be respect right into focus um, We go from there, uh, but the big thing about these pants give me one second. I gotta move Big thing about these pants is the ability. All right, we have leeching path of destiny which will heal for 27% of the damage dealt from Path of Destiny. We use Path of Destiny on the hammer. So when you hit that hammer ability, especially in Outpost Rush, or if you have a big mob of enemies coming at you in Shattered Mountain and you're starting to get low on health, but you're healing your friends at the same time, this leeching from Path of Destiny, it has gotten me out of tight spots so many times, um, especially before the Void Gauntlet where I used to run this in Wars. I put down that path of destiny and I'd heal myself for almost a quarter of my health, if not more, depending on how many people were in front of me. Um, it's a very, very important skill to have on there if you're going to run this hammer build. So keep that in mind. We'll move on to the next piece. Uh, the last piece, and this is one that I am not very happy with. Um, it has what we needed to have for skills. It's literally the only piece on the market that had this skill. And I'm actually going to probably build myself some new um, footwear to take over for this in the next few days. Um, we have a 13 focus, 8 
intelligence. Like I said, that's not what I wanted. It's only 21 points, not even to the 25. And it's intelligence, which is just a waste on this build. There's no reason to have intelligence on it. But you know, it is what it is. It still had a slot and it had the ability. Um, so we put the pristine diamond in it. And then this is a very important ability, okay? This is why I took the hit that I did on this piece. We want to make sure we have that fortifying sacred ground perk on one piece of our equipment. Or I don't I think it's just the equipment. I don't think it comes on a weapon. Um, allies healed by sacred ground gain fortify, increasing damage absorption by 8.5% for five seconds. Very important. Fortify is a big thing on this build. Because you want to not only heal your your allies for more, you want to reduce the amount of damage taken. You are a utility player. That is the whole purpose behind this build, is to help your buddies out. That way they can be DPS maniacs. They can be the heroes and you can just be in the back holding their hand and be like, Daddy's got you, no worries. I have helped so, so many people out through dungeons, soloed bosses in dungeons, just trying to help people out and getting through it. It's a very fun build if you are that person who just likes to be the person keeping everybody alive and helping out. All right. Uh, if you're, you're looking for a DPS build, you're not going to want to be this be this build. All right. Um, so after that, uh, I have not gotten an amulet that I'm really super happy about. But this is the best one right now. We have 20 constitution in there, which is a good amount of attribute points from a necklace. Um, obviously not maxed, but it is a good amount. You get 6% void damage absorption, which is okay. There's more people running void gauntlets now, so PvP, that's a little better. Um, lightning protection is literally just, it was on there, it is what it is. And then you have the luck. At least I run a lot of chests, so for me, it's important. I was more here for the amount of constitution it had. That was about it. All right, we're still looking at the amulet stuff. Now, this is one of the best in slot rings that I've seen for a healer build. Because you want to make sure that you have that sacred perk on your ring. All right. It's plus 7.4% outgoing healing, which is going to help that healing number even more. And then also has 8.7% max mana. Okay. And then you also have the uh, spectral ward, which is going to be 1.9% elemental and 0.63% physical damage absorption. Um, that's going to help out a lot. And that is part of kind of what we're doing with this build and why I went diamonds also is because I have more elemental absorption in the ring. Um, this silver leaf ring is dropped by the level 66 uh, tendril over in the pools in Reek Water. Okay, farm that boss, grab this ring, and that's how you're going to be able to get this one. Um, it is a named ring, so it'll drop there. And then shout out to my boy Crispy Tater, made me this awesome ring. Um, it's really good for the PVE aspect and it's got good focus. Um, so we got 20 focus out of this ring. I get the generate 10% less threat when we're out and about. Um, my luck gear for this set has a couple of carnelians in it also. So I generate a lot less threat than my group around me. Because when you're healing a lot, you're going to generate a lot of threat. Um, there can be times where you have a few carnelians in and people still aggro onto you when it comes to PvE uh, content. So you want to make sure you have as little threat as possible. And it's got the 2.3% chance of rare items. Uh, great, great piece of earring. Like I said, we're still um, min-maxing this gear. I'm still messing around with it. I still need a, I need a better market, honestly, to, to get this rolling and a little better of a skill when it comes to crafting. All right. So that's the gear for this build. Um, like I said, not perfect, but big emphasis on healing output and a big emphasis on the different perks to help keep your people alive, give you fortify and things like that. Now we're going to go into our attributes right now. This is not maxed out perfectly. Uh, I had to respect a few times, been changing up some stuff. So what you want is max number of focus and a hundred constitution. So these extra 12 points really should be here. So this should be 317 uh, focus and a hundred constitution. It'll keep you alive more frequently and it'll give you more 
uh, healing and damage with your life staff. Okay, so I'm not going to stick on that for too long, but just so you guys know, 100 constitution. You know, like I said, it'll keep you alive more. You're going to get that um, increased max health by 10% of your physical armor and also the minus 10% reduction of durability loss for tools. And then the biggest thing is all health consumables plus 20% stronger. Um, obviously, logging speed doesn't matter for most people. I like it because I hit a lot of trees. Um, but those those two perks are going to be great. Um, the increased health is amazing for this build. Um, I rarely ever die. Like I, not to like boost my own skills up. Like this build is just made to not let you die. It takes a lot of mobs in PVE to kill me, and a lot of big boys in PVP where I can't get away and my team dies. Uh, usually, if one or two are alive, we will run through people. All right. So we're going to start with the life staff really quick. A lot of this is pretty similar to uh, the meta life staff builds, but I do not use lights embrace. I hate lights embrace. I don't enjoy using it, so I don't use it. I like all of my skills to be almost instantaneous. I don't like the cast uh, timer. And it can be interrupted, especially in PvP. You try to put that big heal down, you get an arrow in the side and it just stops. That's not a problem with the aura protection that I use. Plus, you're going to get Fortify, which is amazing. So, uh, start at the top of the tree when you guys first unlock this. You want to get aura protection, but then you also want to go over to this side and start getting the sacred ground. Those are your first two abilities, and then get the beacon later. Um... So we'll start on the left side of this tree. It's basically here for sacred ground and the final perk. So you're going to grab life staffs heavy and, and light attacks no longer consume mana. That's really important. You're going to go through mana quite frequently, especially if you have a cooldown reducer like I do on my life staff. Um, to get those cooldowns down, you're going to use a lot of mana. You're going to use a lot of pots. So you don't want those heavy and light attacks to cause any more mana too. Um, now, this is where some people may differ from me, but I pick both of these perks up. Heavy attacks now remove one debuff while passing through an ally. It's going to be very important with the new PTR updates that are coming where people can get debuffs that are going to reduce the amount of healing to them. And that way, if they, if they get hit with, I can't remember what the name of it actually is. It's some sort of like a disease where 40% less healing to your ally um, happens. So you want to make sure you take that debuff off as quick as possible. Um, this this build is big on heavy attacks. Okay, You're going to want to just heavy attack everything unless you have an ally who needs heals and has no debuffs on them. And is really in the thick of it. And you need to put as much healing on them as possible. That's why we got this next perk, which is going to be light attacks. Now heal for 16% weapon damage when passing through an ally. So that allows you not only to hit the person that's hitting them, but heal them as it goes through. So you want to line yourself up with their back all the time. Make sure that you're just behind them, shooting those light attacks through them. If there's no debuffs going around around you, you want to put out some extra damage. And like I said, your buddy really needs help, help with his health. It's very important we do that. Okay. Then you're going to take sake of ground. I'm not going to go too much into it, but basically it's going to give you a sacred ground radius that heals for 16% weapon damage every every second, okay? Every tick is going to be 16%. Uh, it costs 15 mana. Then you're going to grab the regenerate stamina and mana faster while in sacred ground. So that's part of this build too. You are going to stay in your sacred ground probably more than out of it. Uh, this build is meant for you to be in there. Um, I don't... Oh, I completely forgot. We do run medium armor on this build. I do apologize let me just do that real quick. I'm sorry that I did not talk about that. We use medium armor because with medium armor, um, you're going to get a little bit better of a dodge than heavy. You're going to deal 10% bonus damage and 15% bonus healing. And crowd control debuffs are going to apply for 10% longer, which is going to be your hammer. Okay. So we want that bonus healing and we want that hammer. Bonus damage is nice too, uh, but not really the main part of this build. I'm sorry about that. So let's go back into the life staff. Uh, then we're going to pick up while al allies are in sacred ground. They're healed for 50% more from all healing. So that be all the heals that you put out because you're going to be stacking heals while they're in the sacred ground. 
And then uh, if they use any pots or are running food, things like that, they're going to get more healing as that happens. Um, then we're going to pick up this perk here, which is uh, Desperate Speed. When you heal an ally below 50%, health, life, staff, ability, cooldowns are reduced by 10%. Can only be triggered every once every five seconds. Um, that's going to help your heal your uh, cooldowns drastically, especially in war and OPR situations where you run up on a team who is attacking your people and they're all everybody's low, and you just put that sacred ground down, start healing them below that fifty percent. You just watch that cooldown just disappear. Okay, we're gonna put uh, one hit in battle, activate a healing aura for you and your nearby friends. In a four meter radius, the aura heals for 8% weapon damage every every second for six seconds. Okay. That is a good one to have. Um, not the most important out of everything. So if you guys want to adjust for um, when you hit a light attack or release the cooldowns, you can do that too. If you want to switch those out, that would be the one that I would take out of here. Um, but you are also going to be in there with that hammer. So if you get... Uh, hit while you're using the hammer that aura comes out. You got a couple buddies near you um, You and them are going to get healed by that aura, which is going to be great Sacred protection will hold the life staff increase the amount of out of incoming healing to all friendlies in your group by 5% So while you have your life staff out when you're in that back line healing people Then they're gonna get 5% more which is gonna be great uh, when you hit a heavy attack, gain a stacking 10% bonus to healing effectiveness for 10 seconds. Max stacks, 3. So if you get 3 attacks that are going to land, you're going to get 30% bonus healing. That is important, okay? This is why we do mainly heavy attacks with this build. Because you're going to get that extra percentage. Like I said, the only time I don't do that is if I have one buddy who's with me. And they need that extra healing from the light attacks. And I have cooldowns going for my sacred ground. And then we're going to... The reason we put 10 in the side. And the reason why we have all these extra perks here. And we didn't take any from this build. Is because you need that 10 to get the divine blessing. Uh, when you heal an ally below 50% health. They are healed for 30% more. So if you think about it. If they're below 50% health. And you have 3 heavy attacks hitting at the same time. You're healing them for 60% more healing than what you would have without these two perks all right very big thing i respect my life staff a couple times and this is the best way i found it um now i use the orb of protection it's not going to be a big heal like your lights and braces all right but it's going to give you extra bonuses that i think are worth it okay uh so you shoot out a light projectile that grants 10 percent fortify for 20 seconds which also is made better with that perk we have on our armor. All right. Um, it heals an ally for 10% weapon damage and deals 146 weapon damage when it hits an enemy. Um, Fortify reduces incoming damage. So we're going to reduce the amount of incoming damage that our people are taking. And we're going to heal them too. Which is amazing. All right. And it's going to be constant ticks of healing after that. So if Orb Protection hits an ally, they gain recovery for 10 seconds. Recovery heals for 6% weapon damage every second for 10 seconds. All right, that's 60% weapon damage healed on that ally after 10 seconds. Then if you successfully heal an ally with the Orb Protection, you also gain Fortify 2 and recovery. So if I have a guy who's in the front lines, or if you're in OPR and war and you have 6 or 7 of your boys in front of you and you hit that orb protection everybody gets fortify because of the next thing we're going to look at and then you also get fortify and recovery all of you all right so they'll get 60 percent weapon damage heals and fortify for 10 for 10 seconds and then 20 seconds fortify like that's amazing um and then this is a very important one you make sure you get is when this projectile hits it affects all allies within a three meter radius so, like I said, if everybody's clumped up trying to take care of a tank um, or just pushing, just make sure you tell your guys, like, hey, let's group up. Make sure you guys are within that three-meter radius of each other, and we'll just mow down people because you're going to have that fortify. You're going to have the recovery. You're going to have sacred ground below you healing you, which also gives you fortify because of the because of the pants. All that stacking on top of each other is going to make them nearly invincible. Like, it's, it's a great, great 
uh, stacking effect. Then we're going to get uh, Beacon, which is shoot out a light projectile that deals 147 or 146% weapon damage to enemies, attaches to its tire target, and heals all nearby allies for 16% weapon damage for 10 seconds. 160% weapon damage total. Cost mana, and they did increase the cooldown on this, so it is not as effective as it used to be. But with our cooldown reductions on the rest of the stuff, it helps out a lot. Especially if you have a boss that you guys are fighting, or if there's a main tank that you guys are up in their face. Um, you can put this beacon on them, do 146% weapon damage to them, and then heal everybody. And as that person moves around and more people are attacking them, it just stays on them. You don't have to worry about it being in a certain spot. It works out great, especially for people, especially for dungeons. If you're trying to kill Thorp or the Dynasty final boss, you can just put it on them, and it'll heal who's around. Um, then you want the infused light, which is going to be beacon's area effect is now 50% larger. Very important. There'll be even more healing and they can back up and kind of maneuver while they're fighting. And then beacon lasts 5% longer. Now, if you guys want to, um, I, I use the protection protector strength. If you have a buff heal for 10% cause you're going to get that fortify, which is a buff. So it'll heal for 10% more. Um, I use this one, but some people do like the speed of light on the beacon. When the beacon heals a target, it also applies 20% haste for three seconds, allowing your people to kind of move around a little more frequently. If you have a DPS who's trying to get away from some people, you hit them with that beacon. They can actually move quicker and get out of there while they're getting healed. It is a pretty good utility, but... I don't use it because, like I said, we're here for health. I'm going to be in there with them most of the time with the hammer. Um, or I'll be in the back line and just being able to heal them a lot more efficiently is better for me. All right, that's the life staff. Let's take a look at the Warhammer. Um, now, the Warhammer build, I really like. It's a good use. Um, and it, like I said, it's a utility. So we're looking at literally just CCs. And then the Path of Destiny for healing along with the slow and stuff like that. So what you're going to want to take is uh, gain in power on heavy attacks, increasing attack damage by 20% for 4 seconds. I do almost all heavy attacks with a hammer unless somebody is really low and I just need to tap them a couple times. Um, you want to get exhaustive attacks. All Warhammer abilities apply exhaust. Slowing targets stamina regeneration for 20 or by 20 seconds. 20% for 5 seconds. It does not stack, which is fine. But that'll make it so that they can't dodge roll out of you all the time, which is great. Um, Hardened Steel adds grit to the Warhammer. Heavy attacks and gains 20% damage reduction while the heavy attack grit is active. Um, basically, grit gets you, uh, prevents you from being staggered by incoming attacks also. So this is going to help you a lot. For your damage reduction, like I said, we're going for heavy attacks with the hammer, so that's going to be great there. Um, you're going to get quick recovery again for the heavy attacks. Heavy attacks that hit reduce cooldowns by 7%. So just hitting, go in there and hitting that heavy attack after you stun everybody um, and letting your boys take it too. All right, so it moves us to our first actual ability which is going to be Wrecking Ball. You strike the ground with your Warhammer, doing 130% weapon damage and flattening your target. Okay, this will put them literally on the ground, which is great. Especially if you have any Spear guys that you're going to be playing with too, because they do extra damage to people that are knocked down uh, with some perks. Uh, on a successful hit, gain Fortify, granting 20% 20, 20 damage resistance for 7 seconds, which is another stack of Fortify on top of what we already have on our Life Staff, which will allow you basically just to keep Fortify on you for <laughs> basically ever. I mean, this thing just stacks Fortify. It's crazy. I love it. Um, and then you definitely want the Breathing Room, which is all targets within a 1.5 meter of the target hit are also flattened which is amazing. Um, it's basically going to give you this whole area of just completely flattened out people um, that are on the ground. It helps a lot in Shattered Mountain with the different mobs. If you have to get away from a bunch of mobs too, you just flatten them down and you run away. 
that works really great and then uh deal 35 percent extra damage for one second after taking damage you're gonna get hit it's gonna happen so having the extra damage percentage will help um, not a necessity perk if you find something else on this tree that you might like like increased heavy attack damage by 15 percent against targets under 30 percent health i would think about switching that up um, you can do that Increase armor penetration for all Warhammer light and heavy attacks. You could do that too. Um, it's really, this point is kind of just whatever you want over here. You can change up or if you want to adjust for any of these. I'm not huge on these ones over on this tree, but because um, these are a lot of light attack stuff. So I personally would either, either do the uh, Contemption or Power Through Pain. It's a, it's a good... Uh, way of doing stuff. So on this side of the tree, you want to do outnumbered, which is increased damage absorption by 10% if surrounded by two or more enemies within the three meters. And you go in to do those CC attacks um, on OPR or if you're out in the world, that's going to be a very crucial one. It's going to allow you to kind of stay in there a little longer and not get hurt as bad. Then we're going to want reduced damage taken by 10% while sprinting because you're basically always sprinting while you're moving around. Um, you're not crouching in wars or anything like that. Uh, you're going to do this perk here, which is Shockwave. Uh, give me one second. Just going to take a break. All right. Um, you're going to slam your Warhammer onto the ground, causing a 3-meter radius earthquake that deals 80% weapon damage stuns to all impact targets. For two seconds. All right. Uh, taunt gem compatible. If you have a Cardelian gem equipped into your Warhammer, this ability afflicts taunt for six seconds to all enemies. Taunt causes monsters to focus only on you. We don't want that. Okay. <laughs> Do not have a Carnelian in your hammer. If there's a level 600 hammer that has a Carnelian slotted in it on the market, don't buy it. You don't want the taunt. All right. If you are a strength build and you want that taunt, more power to you. But we don't want it, all right? We want uh, Frailty. The trauma of the attack causes weaken, decreasing the damage dealt from the target's attacks by 10% for 10 seconds. So you're going to go in there and do that shock wave. You're going to have Fortify on everybody, which makes their damage absorption higher. And then you're going to take away 10% of the other people's damage for 10 seconds, okay? Oh my gosh, it makes it so much better. I mean, you're reducing the people's damage by a lot with all your abilities and things like that. And then you want to do the uh, Meteoric Crater. <coughs> Sorry about that. Which expands the range of the Shockwave by four, uh, to a four meter radius. Um, allowing you to hit more people with that Shockwave. Especially if someone tries to dodge out of the way. Those fat dodges aren't going to get out of the way of the four meters if you're up in their face. All right. We've already talked about the remove damage while sprinting. All right, so you're going to deal 15% increased damage against targets affected by Warhammer debuffs, which is amazing. All right, I always save my Path of Destiny for last because they're already going to have debuffs from these two abilities, allowing me to get an extra 15% damage from the Path of Destiny, which if you remember, we have that perk on our, I believe, chest piece, that gives us that healing power from Path of Destiny. So we're going to get 15% more healing from Path of Destiny because they're already under debuffs. All right. So we want to make sure we have that one and then regain 35% of damage dealt as health when using a Crowd Crusher ability. So again, regaining that 35% health, like it's just going to keep you alive. All right. Hammer is going to help keeping you alive. The Life Staff is going to help keep you alive. You standing in your sacred grounds and you fortify, keeping you alive. Like every single piece of this build is to keep you alive. <laughs> All right. Then we're going to go for the Path of Destiny, which is a powerful ground strike that erupts a linear wave of energy in front of the player, dealing 10% weapon damage to all or 110% weapon damage to all targets in its path. You're going to go Path of Destiny now staggers all targets in its path also, which can you another debuff, which would be great. And then the ability cooldown reduced by 5% for each enemy hit with the Path of Destiny. If you do this right, your cooldown will be very low. It is a 22 second cooldown. So if you hit enough people, it reduces the cooldown quite a bit. 
and then the very end we're going to get whenever a target is affected by a crowd control effect they are slowed by 20 percent for four seconds all right that's the aftershock so this is going to help crowd control heal you keep you alive with reduced damage coming in this is a great build for helping you out helping your your group out in the small fights that are near you and just all around helpful support which is what your life staff build want is meant to be all right and this is the path of destiny it just hits and three three ticks in front if you have 15 mobs in front of you especially if you go to shattered mountain for my shattered mountain peeps know that that can happen really quickly it'll get your health back up it'll reduce the amount of damage that are come that's coming into you so it's going to be great help um, that's all for this build guys if you guys have any suggestions on things i can do to make it better any perks you might change different i'm always willing to try out some new stuff but this is the build that i love it's really fun to play with because you can all you can get in there in melee you can heal do all sorts of stuff and it really helps out your team with you so appreciate it guys make sure you hit that like button like i said hit up the comment sections if you have anything that you need that uh, you'd like to suggest if you like the video let me know i also stream over on twitch uh, just weird Redbeard, just like the youtube channel and make sure you guys hit that subscribe button i appreciate it peace out we'll see you in the next one